Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Is it Friday yet? Oh my god. Are you guys with me on this? <clears throat> no? Alright, you must be having an easy week. <laughs> Not me. But you know what is kind of cool that I got this week? How about my Clay Coon Trucking Diesel Medic t-shirt? Booyah! No water stamp. Fits nice. Made by Hanes. Super comfortable, half polyester, half cotton, if I'm not mistaken. I did rip the tag off and throw it in the trash. But I got it for a slick deal, and I had fast shipping on that thing, so we got it real quick. Oop. I accidentally left my beer in the freezer too long. How many times does that happen to you? I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Not nearly as cold, but it's whatever. Anywho, back to today's discussion topic. Different types of precision measuring tools that you're gonna run into in the automotive trade. Now I have a nice handful of tools to share with you today that I keep here at my house because I like doing most of my machining and measuring stuff here at the house because it's what I'm into. I don't do a whole bunch of this stuff at work but when I actually do need to do it at work, we have a set there that I can use so I don't need to worry about it as much. Some of these things I actually have duplicates of, some of these things I don't. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> first things first, you can never go wrong without a tape measure. Let me tell you guys, I use this thing quite a bit. Anywhere from measuring the width, length of a bolt to maybe measuring the uh, ride height of a vehicle. So if there's torsion bars that you have to unwind, now granted, you can take a paint marker, mark it, count the amount of turns that you had to unwind the torsion bar, mark it, and then turn it back when you're done. Uh, but that's not always possible, especially if a torsion bar breaks and you have to start from scratch. It's always kind of a good idea to go to service information, get the appropriate ride height, and go from there. So that might give you one fancy tool to have, and if you were in dirt track at all, you know you can also use this for front end alignments by toe and go. So, that's a handy tool to have at work as well. Everyone needs a tape measure. Second tool, which is pretty much going to be a go-to for a lot of you guys, but it comes in different variations. But I'm going to share with you this Matco FG44 Made in USA Spark Plug Gap Setter. Metric on one side, Imperial on the other. Where this comes in handy is instead of having a bunch of feeler gauges like this all stacked up and going, okay, I need 30,000, so there's my, there's my four, and there's my... 20, here's my nine. You know what I'm saying? You're going back and forth trying to take out just the gauges that you need to try to set spark plug gap or verify gap. You can do it, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but an easier tool to get is something like this where you simply just take the measuring device, start at the very front, work your way down. Oh yeah, I'm at 30 thousandths. So this is a little popcorn, a cell, uh, plug that you have for small block Chevy. We use these when we were doing racing. So always cool to have a device like this. Just makes things down and dirty, quick and easy. Now you might decide to pick up some elongated feeler gauges and in some cases even the 45 degree style. I actually have the 45 degree style at work but I, that's for measuring like lash throughout the overhead cams like on Hondas and things like that. But I like these long ones for measuring cylinder head warpage or deck warpage on an engine, but you're also gonna need something like this. This is a precision straight edge or machinist straight edge made by Central Tools. And it has this plastic sleeve on here for a reason because if I take it off, it's CNC machined and it truly is a straight edge. Now I've heard of some people using a uh, contractor, let me grab it real quick. Now I have heard of people using a contracting square to say, hey, here's my straight edge, that's all that I need. Bada bing, bada boom. Measure my warpage with that. It's not CNC machined, it's not gonna be truly straight. You don't know if this has been dropped, you don't know if it actually was milled straight to begin with. It's fairly straight, okay, otherwise, construction workers wouldn't use it, but 
Check it out. What do you get with wood that you don't always get with a fresh piece of metal? Okay, you get a lot of warpage in wood. So you can actually take this and get your 90 degree and, okay, yeah, I'm fairly close to 90 degrees. Perfect. Cool. Good to go. You're not going to see that 2000s flaw or that 4000s flaw within that wood. You're just not. Now, with a cylinder head, that's all you need in order for that gasket to go again. So that's why we ran with the CNC machine straight edge. I used it a lot at the dealership, not so much anymore now that I'm at the independent shop. Most of our head work actually does go to a machinist shop and they do it all from there. But I used to use it all a lot at the dealership. Another tool that we use a lot at the independent shop, and I also use it a lot over at the dealership, is just a veneer caliper. Now this one's digital. It's made by Empire. I have one at work that's actually a Harbor Freight Special. But the measuring is all the same. The process is the same. You have an inside measurement tool right here on the top, and you have an outside measurement tool here on the bottom. It tells you both not only on the actual ruler side itself, but it'll actually give you a digital readout of how many millimeters or uh, inches that you're measuring. So if you needed a circumference of an O-ring or a bolt diameter or something like that, you would end up using something like this. So a very crucial and a very important tool to have in your arsenal in the automotive world. Another one that could be crucial, but depending on what your flavor is over at work, like what are you specialized in? If you're specialized in doing rear ends, you're gonna be using this inch pound torque wrench or rolling torque wrench. Now I wasn't able to get a good, clear, up close shot when I did my toolbox tour, but I'll show you here. It's got a dial in here. Now I can actually turn and set this to what the specification is, and with my hand and the socket, even if I have to use adapters, roll that rear end pinion around to see what my lash is or my total torque to rotate. What's it take? So that's a tool that's used quite a bit, especially if you're working on rear ends. Not so much for everything else. You don't want to use this as your go-to for torquing like uh, cam bolts down or cam caps or you know rod caps or main bearing caps or anything like that. You wouldn't want to use it for that. You'd want to get an actual torque wrench for something like that. Now most of those torque wrenches are at work. I do not have my Snap-on Digital here or my half inch or the quarter inch one that we use all the time at work. I just got a couple of, uh, I got a 3 8 and an inch pound torque wrench that you guys have seen in the toolbox tour. If you haven't seen the tour, I'll put the card up here. Look, they're great. I loved having them. They work well for me. Something else that you might want to use or you will come into contact with at some point in the game is a machinist ruler. Now, I have this in my machinist book, otherwise known as the machinist bible. But you might want to use a machinist ruler. You'll see here. Northrop Grumman. So I worked on the, uh, what was it, the CVN 77, George H.W. Bush. That was a pretty cool piece of machine to be on and being an outside machinist. I got a chance to experience a whole other side of the mechanical trade, not just automotive. So that was kind of where I really first started messing around with wrenches and whatnot. And I started tinkering on my own car shortly after. Just a little history for you on my background. At any rate, something else that you're going to run into a lot are broken or stripped bolts that you're going to end up needing to work out. And if you can't work them out, you're going to need to drill them out. So you're going to need some kind of center punch. So something like this where you can just stab and go and it shoots it, leaves that indentation, drill your hole, start with a small pilot drill bit, get a left-handed drill bit set if you don't already have them, start working your way in, extract it because you're going to end up doing helicoils because nine times out of ten, the customer would rather you put a helicoil in that head than have to pay for an entire new cylinder head. If there's a way to save it and you have a way of being able to save it, they're going to want to pay the lesser cost. So you will do a lot of drilling for sure, a lot of extracting for sure. So make sure you get a little center punch because that's going to help out a lot. Something else that you're going to use quite a bit, and it depends again on your position, but if you're doing a lot of like brake jobs and things like that, you might get yourself one of these dial uh, dial calipers. So you have this, and as it's mounted and it's fixated to whatever metal surface you're on, you can use this to check lash on a rear end. 
you can use this to check rotor run out, total parallelism of the rotor as it's going around to see if they need to be machined or not. You can check it, the hub, see if the hub is warped or anything like that. Um, we've used this for a handful of different things over at the shop. It's a nice tool to have for sure. And if you get into a spot where you actually have access to the camshaft, you can actually see how much it comes up and how much it comes down. So it's a nice tool to have for sure. Look, I know there's a lot of other machining tools out there. You're going to run into a lot of other precision measurement style of tools between your digital torque wrenches and, you know, uh, your inside and outside micrometer sets. Okay, I've got an inside snap gauge set. I don't have the outside micrometer set yet, uh, but an inside micrometer set, you might run into this, especially if you get into engine building where you need to figure out the, the cylinder bore diameter. Uh, but one doesn't work without the other. Okay, so if you have this, you need the outside micrometer to measure the inside uh, snap gauge to see where you're at. So a lot of machining tools out there. But what other machining tools did I not cover? Which ones do you guys use quite frequently? Please share them down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Make sure you get yourself a diesel medic shirt. These things are pretty cool. Cheers to those of you that have your beers, and I'll see you again sometime soon. Deuces.